hop on these long rides sometimes you just get to thinking about life in the universe and all those things that nobody really knows the answers to I mean obviously religion tries to give you a, an answer and depending on your religion they all have different kinds of answers some are closer together than others obviously your your big three that we almost all are somewhat acquainted with that being Judaism Christianity and Islam all essentially come from the same background and a lot of people don't know that they they assume that you know they were just warring religions um, and if you know about religion or you know about those three religions you know that first you had the Judeo side then you had a splinter or a splinter that became Islam and it's all regarding a dispute over uh, the oldest son of one of the prophets of Judea or the Jewish prophets he had a son with a slave girl and then he had a son with his wife and the descendants of the firstborn son who happened to be to the slave girl they end up becoming what you know is the Islamic uh, religion and then you got the other side which is following the birth of the son to the wife and that was what continued on the Jewish tree until the eventual forming of Christianity so there's a pretty good I don't want to say pretty good it's not a good argument but a good reason or a valid reason I should say that the Jews and the Muslims don't get along so well because the Muslims kind of feel like they're the natural order or or authority holders because in the early days of this one monotheist religion things kind of went down the blood or the bloodline and authority was given through that so then the Jewish uh, sect they're just continuing on and continuing on I'm not sure how much has changed obviously there's different types of Jews out there your Hasidic Jews and I guess you could say more fundamentalist Jews um, but it's, it's just like Muslims you know you got a couple of different splinters of the Muslim faith with the uh, Sunnis and the Shiites again it's people get these different interpretations of who was really in charge or who had authority to do something and you get splinters Christianity same thing you know you had a whole bunch of different kind of Christian uh, churches that eventually kind of gets put under one blanket of Catholicism and the Catholics kind of systematically uh, destroy anyone that's a Christian that's not Catholic um, and they have forget what they called it but it was basically like a, a cleansing and if you weren't a practicing Catholic then you were a heretic and that goes on for quite a while and then you have the Reformation, uh, Reformation with Martin Luther who essentially starts a, a Protestant or the protest movement protesting the Catholic Church 
And from that, you get a whole bunch of different forms of Christianity. You know, your Protestants, your Baptists, and Mormons, and all these other guys. And Mormonism is a kind of a really unique form of Christianity because they kind of focus on the fact that after Christ died and all his disciples died, that the authority to preach or to have the power to preach was taken from the earth and didn't return again until the times of Joseph Smith. And uh, so they kind of have this weird hybrid. There's a lot of Jewish stuff that goes on or what they say is Jewish stuff. Uh, they have a temple and a temple practice, um, temple ceremonies and things like that, that a lot of the Jews um, had or have or what the Mormons believe the Jews did. Obviously, if the authority to preach in the temples or to perform temple works was taken off the planet, then you have to assume that the Jews also lost the ability to do things right, right? And I feel really good. Let me just pause there for a second and just say, I'm freaking feeling good right now. My body's feeling good, my legs are feeling good. It's gotta be the sugar. It's gotta be the sugar. Sugar, sugar. Ah. Anyway. I don't wanna get too far off into the Mormon thing, but it's unique in the sense that they are one of the few quote-unquote Christian denominations that a lot of Christians say are not Christian. Now, the dumb answer that you'll usually hear is, well, the, call, the church is not called the Mormon church. The church is called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And most of your Christian denominations will say, well, just because you put his name in there doesn't mean it's his. And I tend to agree with that. Uh, because fundamentally, at its base level, um, the, the God and the Jesus Christ of the Mormon church is very different in the roles that they play uh, for humanity than the biblical God and the biblical Jesus Christ. And what I mean by that is that in Mormonism, God and Jesus aren't the only like greater beings though they're the only greater beings that they say are, you know, important. They, they, they are, in fact, our God, but there are other gods. Gods older than our God that came before him. Gods that will be younger than our God that are still to come. That if you practice the faith of Mormonism, you know, so righteously that you can yourself become like God. Um, not necessarily ever equal to God because by you you know being so righteous it elevates him and continues pushing him ahead of you because you are essentially glorifying him so he gets that too I don't know it's kind of like a pyramid scheme right So, that's not a normal Christian belief. Um, there's a lot of terminology that gets used in the Mormon faith that, uh, for anyone that's been Mormon all their lives, it doesn't seem strange to have the thought of, you know, God and Jesus and all these things the way you think of them, because that's all you've ever known it. There's a lot of people who convert to Mormonism for one reason or another. And then there's the people on the outside who look in and just go, wow, you've, you've got no idea what the God of the Bible is because if you did, you wouldn't be so blasphemous in what you think God is and what his role is in our lives and what our role is in life. And that's where I'm going to drop that because it gets pretty, pretty ugly and pretty, I don't want to say hate-filled, but it's not, because it's not hate. 
It's just, well, it gets ugly. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what about the non-Judeo-Christian Islamic religions? And to that, I will say, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about them. Your Hindus, Buddhists, and whatever's out there. Um, being who I am, I, I grew up in a household that primarily had some kind of Christian faith uh, represented. We didn't go to church, per se. We, uh, we had a very basic uh, Christian belief. You know, there's a God, there's a Jesus, He died for your sins, things like that. But there wasn't a whole lot of teaching about it, or necessarily learning. I got most of my faith, or lack thereof, from personal experiences, um, and personal, you know, going to church at different denominations and whatnot. But yeah, I, uh, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about your Eastern religions. Ooh, that feels good. I'm fine with all religion. That I can tell you. Um, I don't really call myself an atheist anymore. I kind of went through a phase where I said, well, there can't be anything. God's dead or doesn't exist, yada, yada, yada. Um, but like all my other faiths, I, I understand that atheism in itself is a faith. You have to have faith that there's nothing there, right? And if that's the case, okay, no big deal. Then just try to be a good person here on earth, right? In our short little 80 or so years that we get here. Um, for the most part, you know, I'm okay with that if there is no God. But at the same time, I've had enough personal experiences that at one point in time in my life, I, I used to justify my belief in a God. And then as I grew as an individual, I just thought, okay, well maybe these things were things that I just gave a supernatural power too, but there wasn't any supernatural like phenomenon really happening. But then I started kind of coming around to the realization that I don't know exactly what there is out there. God may be real, he might not be, and I'm open to it in, in either case. I don't think that any one religion has the answer. And that's kind of my big, my big perspective right now. It could change in a couple years. It certainly has before. But as I sit right now, if there is a God, I don't know how involved he is in our day-to-day -day operation, is or isn't involved or ever played, right? I like to think of God more as a scientist, somebody who started an experiment and kind of sat back to see what happened. And for better or worse, you know, we're, we're existing in this test that there is no pass or fail on. It's just a there's a beginning, the creation, a middle, the evolution of what we are today and what's to come, 
and eventually there will be an end. Most, uh, most labs run a test for so long. You know, and how we view time is very, very specific to what works for us as humans. So to try to say, well, how many years? I don't know. All a year is, is one trip for our little planet around our little sun. You know, if we had been a couple of thousand miles or million miles closer or farther from the sun, a year could be a completely different amount of time. Our minutes, our seconds, our days, all that stuff would be different. So I don't, I don't believe so much in time as a, a unit of measurement from the perspective that we usually think of time as. Obviously, it matters here on Earth, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, if there is a creator that created our universe, he's obviously a lot bigger than us. Which means his, his time reference could be a whole lot different. We may have only existed for a very short second of time. I'll give you an example. We have this really cool thing called the uh, uh, Hadron Super Collider, I believe. And it creates different elements or atoms or whatever, right? They perform these tests and they happen in fractions of a second. Fractions of fractions of seconds. And in those fractions of fractions of second, a thing is both created and dies sometimes faster than we can even see or record. Now for us, that's a split second. But if you were that thing that was created, it could have been forever. You know, because the reference in time is all relative to your perception in time. And right now our perception is based on our spinning around a bright burning object and different fractions of that. Who's to say that, you know, God's not just got us in a dark room right now under a microscope? Who knows? And if he flipped on the switch, space would become super bright, right? We don't know because our perception is so limited. We can only see so far. Man, it's cooled down quite a bit. Just this cloud cover with the uh, the rain that's coming. It's dropped the temperature almost 13 degrees. It's pretty nice. 